Well, our next guest made history as the Marine Corps first African American female pilot as noted by the Department of Defense. Later, Vernice Armour, aka Fly Girl, was recognized as America's first African American female combat pilot. She served two combat tours of duty in the Gulf, flying her missile equipped attack helicopter above the deserts of Iraq. Vernice joins us today because she is on a new mission. She's on a mission to help others overcome their own personal and professional battles. Her book is called Zero to Breakthrough, the seven step battle tested method for accomplishing goals that matter. So excited to have you here. Thanks for joining me, Vernice. Hey, it's exciting to be here. Absolutely. I feel like I'm sitting right next to you. I wish you were. I mean, one of these <laughs> days soon, we're gonna have people back on our yellow couch, but we'll, this'll do oh. for now. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, I gotta hear, I wanna go back before we get to your book, because I actually wanna talk about a time, um, because you, you have this like incredible history of all these times, like knowing from the time you were extremely little, you wanted to be a police officer on a horse, to all the, all the way up to when you were in ROTC, um, during a day where you saw a picture of a young black female in an army flight suit. And I, I just want to know sort of that progression of how it led to getting you to where you were today. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll make it super like quick. Age of four, I was, you know, born in Chicago, grew up there, saw horses downtown, you know, the mountain patrol. And as I grew up, I wanted to do something to give back to my community or to help my community from where it was. When I got to college, uh, I ended up getting involved with ROTC, went to leadership advance camp, saw a black woman in a flight suit as a part of the aviation um, display, right? Where they had different helicopters and there were pilots there that you could talk to. So in that moment, it was the tangibility of the possibility. I could see her, touch her, talk to her, ask her questions. Um, I wanted to be in the toughest, right? So that was the Marine Corps. My dad was a Marine, three tours Vietnam. My grandfather, was a Marine. So I knew I wanted to be in the Marine Corps as well and ended up being the Marine Corps first black female pilot, America's first black female combat pilot. Um, and it's been, you know, an amazing journey, her story, as we say. Well, thank you for your service, first of all. And I just think it's, yeah, I think it's incredible. Uh, do you have any fear? I mean, looking at you in some of these pictures and then knowing that you had this, I don't know if I'm going to say it right, but the AH, what is it, 1W Super Cobra attack helicopter? Am I saying that right? AH-1 Whiskey Super Cobra attack <laughs> helicopter. Yeah, which is a missile-equipped <laughs> helicopter and serving, you know, like you said, two combat tours of duty in the Gulf and, and all the work that you've done. I mean, do you have any fears? And, and obviously, this is what you're teaching people to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because I also talk about gutsy, right? Being yeah. gutsy and your gutsy move and your gut, you know, it's right, it takes guts to do it. Well, if there's no fear around it, it's not gutsy. It's just like an action on your to-do list. Um, I did become that police officer. And I remember the first day in police academy when I didn't know if I was gonna make it. And that was one of the biggest fears of my life because it had been my life dream, right? Mm. My my. So if I didn't, if I, didn't make it, what did that mean for the rest of my life? It was a very surreal moment. So do I have fears? Absolutely. And in the military, we actually call um, not having fear a hazard and it's called no fear, no apparent fear of death, NAFOD. Because mm. if, if you don't have that fear, then you're gonna take risks that are outside of the envelope that shouldn't be taken. Right. Yeah, that actually feels great to hear you say that. I think a lot of people hearing that are going to be like, OK, that means I can do some really incredible things. That, that's very empowering. So let's let's talk about your book. It's zero to breakthrough. And, and I want to break down some of these ideas of how you say that we can actually reach our personal and professional battles and overcome them and get to those goals. So the first thing you say is you've got to create your own flight plan. Absolutely. And this is in, in corporate America, you know, it's the way forward. It's a strategic plan. And I attack it from that attack. You like that? I attack it from that angle and the personal angle because people, we make up our organizations. So where do we want to go as an organization and where do I want to go as a person and how do we fit that together? Right. How do we bring our passions to work? So where are you? Where do you want to be? Don't think about the how, because then we start to boil things down. That's a direct order. Do not when we get to step two, that's the risk mitigation, right? Pre-flight. Then step three, take off. Step four, execute. And finally, step five, it has three distinct phases. Review, recharge, reattack. 
review our successes and failures, recharge emotionally, physically, intellectually, and my favorite and final step, reattack. Now, do you know why it's my favorite? Uh, is it because we have to accept some failures that we have that might make us even better? That sounds good. But no, because it has the word attack in it. <laughs> like it sounds good, but no. <laughs> That's the secret sauce of the reattack. And since I'll be honest, since COVID and our social justice movement movement, when I saw George Floyd take his last breath, um, we have to reimagine and reinvent, right? Reassess, reimagine, and reinvent where we are and where we want to be. And again, in this time of COVID and Black Lives Matter, social justice movement, being a former cop, former soldier, National Guardsman, the peacekeepers on our streets, as well as an openly gay black woman. Uh, the perspective has just been crazy. And we can all take personal accountability to step up in our own community and engage with our world, even though I know it feels so overwhelming for people to feel like, how can I impact the world, right? I, think I just want to so make true. sure. Yeah, and I think we've all we've all learned so much during this time about ourselves, about the world, about things that we need to work on and change. Uh, we're out of time, but I do want to ask you because I, I love the the profound moment of when you were a young girl uh, and you in well in the ROTC and you saw the Army flight woman and she was black in the uniform. Do you think that you would have been inspired had she not been black? Because I know how important that representation is, and and I want to make right. sure that so many people see you and are inspired as well. And again, this is really big. Again, in our organizations, right? Uh, and in our lives, period. First, I wasn't a young girl. I was 19, 20 wow. years old in ROTC and saw this black woman in a flight suit and was still inspired to create a new dream in my life. Right or wrong, good or bad, is her being black, was that, a, yeah, was a key factor. I've been flying since I was five years old on airplanes. But the tangibility of the possibility, it's important, period, end of story and making that gutsy move in order to be successful you gotta get gutsy gotta get gutsy and it's okay to have fear i love this conversation thanks so much for joining me I'm so excited to read your book bernice transform your fear to fuel love boom it. stay gutsy all right thank you so much here's the website so you can learn more about zero to breakthrough it's bernicearmor.com for that